Hello, everybody. I'm Tom Wild from Pro Writing Aid. Thank you for joining us for yet another session in the Ask a Book Doctor series. My guest, as ever, is Sally Jones. Sally OJ. Sorry, Sally. Uh, our, our resident book doctor. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm even Sally Orson Jones, if you want to be really posh. Thank I'm doing both. great, Tom. And I'm so, I was so touched just now to, I sneakily turned uh, on comments just so I could see and I was very, very touched. I've turned them off again now, but we're, we are gonna miss you guys a lot as well. But we just wanna make sure you get the best, the best quality, you know, and, and we will be back with good yes. quality stuff. Yeah, yeah, and we've absolutely loved doing these sessions, mm. we really have. Um, so yeah, we will certainly be back and, and bring you more help and support. Sally, on yes. to tonight's session. So. We were talking, in fact, last month we were talking about um, the March session. And, and you said to me, I, I've had this idea, it's been bubbling away. Um, I think we should talk about um, what to expect and how to manage expectations when submitting to an agent. Uh, so yeah. let's start there. Where did the idea come from? What's, what, what, what's the driving force behind this? The idea came because I'm working, obviously, with authors all the time. And what I find, and please understand them, this is, this is real generalizations. I'm not talking about any one in particular or two or three in particular. But what I find that calm, rational, extremely intelligent people, um, when, um, who, were, who keep their heads throughout the whole process, take criticism, great, it all goes really well, when they come to submit to an agent, once they press send, it's 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 like it's like it all goes out of the window, and and all their self esteem goes, and all their uh, confidence goes, and their understanding of the process seems to to go if if it was ever there. And I think it's very interesting that people, nearly every author I've ever worked with, is so tuned in to the whole process. Yeah of writing and 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 what happens to a degree after you get an agent of how to submit to an agent and that's not what we're going to be talking about today just to be clear we're not going to be talking about how to submit to an agent there are so many excellent resources out there to tell you how to do that but it's the it's managing their expectations once they've pressed send on that submission that you know i see people suffer so much mm. and I believe we can talk tonight about how not to suffer so much, just about what the process is. And I've, you know, I know quite a lot about this. I've been doing this for a long time. I've also uh, talked to a, a few agents in build up to this. I've talked to one person who's not an agent, but knows everything there is to know about writing. So I've got, you know, my, my knowledge here, plus I've made sure to check, checklist it with other, with, with actual agents. And it's, I'm possibly, not definitely, but possibly going to do what I've never done before, which is go to my notes, because I want to be sure that I quote people properly. So we'll see how we go. But that's what we're going to talk about, managing expectations once you have submitted. And any of you here who have submitted will, I think, recognise the, the agony that kicks in within about 30 seconds of doing it yeah. and, and continues unabated. It, you know and it's sometimes a very long process so let's let's try and bring a little sunshine into that shall we yeah okay so so and, and let's be i guess a, a note of realism because we all see the, the you know the the wonderful stories about the people that get picked up and very quickly mm. get to, you know get published um we know about them yeah curse, curse them and their wonderful fairy <laughs> stories i mean they when I say fairy stories, I don't mean they're making them up. I, I just mean it's like you're the best thing you imagine. Yes. We've all read them and they true, they happen. They happen. There is, you know, every now and then you will get somebody who submits to their first five agents and those five agents have a fight over them. And, you know, it goes on to be a billion seller. But it is so rare. But those are the ones we remember. We always forget that we've re read a hundred, 200 um interviews with authors who say you know it took me two years it took me 
you know, I went through 500 agents before I found, you know, we, you know, Sarah, it took Sarah a year to get the right agent. You know, people mm-hmm. forget all this. She talks about it a lot. Yeah. But, you know, so Sarah Waters, I mean, sorry to people who mm. might not know who I'm talking about. So, you know, it's it's not to do very often. It's not to do with the quality of your book or your writing. It's not to do with. It's it's not to do with you. And yeah. that's what's hard for people to remember. It's It's to do with everything but you and your book almost. And, you know, of course, of course, there are stories, you know, I've been personally involved in stories where some where an agent has got a book, read it the same week and taken the person on. But it is I cannot tell you how rare that is. And that is not to be expected. And we're going to talk tonight about what yeah. is to be expected. OK. Yeah. OK. And, and part of the reason for that, as you explained to me, is that you put yourself in the shoes of an agent. Think about what their day job is. Right. So so should we start there. Let's start there. Agents are, are very, 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 very busy people. What they spend their days doing is try to, to is working on their signed authors. They're either trying to place their books, or once their books are placed, they're they're trying to sell them. You know, they're t- trying to do the best for them. They're doing deals for them overseas. They're having meetings within the agency. There's all. I mean, agents have extraordinarily busy days and you'll notice that I have not mentioned and then there's an hour for reading there isn't they fit their reading in when they can it used to be on the train on the way to work very often Mm. um they'll do it at night after they put their kids to bed they'll they'll do it uh you know while they're sort of watching their kids play football I mean quite literally I've bumped into an agent at uh sort of a do And she was, she said, oh, hello, I was just reading the book you sent me on my phone just now while while I was waiting for my friend to arrive. You know, they, they, they fit them in when they can. There's, it's not like this quiet, peaceful, you know, soft atmosphere where, um, you know, they drift in with their cup of coffee and they think, oh, I've got this one book to read today I I think I'll I'll settle down and do that now I mean they all wish it could be like that but it isn't like that how many so you you, how many books might they have so how many manuscripts are they looking at at any one time I think if you've got a relatively not successful agency because that's not quite how it works Mm. if you've got a popular agency or an agency that's got agents that people want every day at least well over 100 submissions i it's it, that rockets up and and it's usually much more than that that rockets up if the lists have been closed and then they yeah. open and and then the agent usually puts on twitter or somewhere hello our lists are open again or they put it on their website when that happened quite recently with a, a very uh desired agent uh uh, they had um, uh, 4,000 on the first day that, that the list was opened. And then 4,000? Yeah, and they kept coming. They kept what? coming. So this is what people have to remember. You're not the only person submitting. Mm. Now, this does not mean that your book's got no chance of getting seen. It, it doesn't. M- mostly, mostly your book will get seen. This is if you submit to an agent. If you submit to a publisher, don't submit to a publisher, but if you submit directly to a publisher with no agent in between, your book will go, nearly always your book will go on what they call the slush pile, you'll all have heard of the slush pile. And and it, the chances of it getting seen goes down hmm. because the slush pile gets worked through. But again, publishers are very busy people. They've got a lot of things to do. And, and that does not really include reading the slush pile. And they don't want people sending them books. So they will, you know, it, they want books to come to them from agents, is what I'm saying. They don't want yeah. books to be unsolicited. So they, but an agent, if you send a book to an agent, it, um, it will almost certainly get looked at. It will. But when I've been asking around over the last few days 
and one of the agents I asked, some of them wanted to be named, some of them didn't. One of the agents I asked, I said, well, you know, what's a reasonable time to expect that you might get around to re- reading book? And she said, oh, you know, on average, three or four months. But, right. but she said, you have to remember that there's big things going on in the life of an agent. And primarily, well, apart from their actual lives and holidays and school holidays and children and all of that, primarily there's the two big, this is in the UK. So it's going to be the same in America, but at different events. There are two big book fairs that, that bookend the year. There's a London book fair in the spring. Well, actually, this affects publishing all over the world. I know an Australian agent who's coming over for the London book fair. And there's the Frankfurt book fair in the autumn. And in the weeks leading up to that, they're going to be really focused on their on their signed authors, on their on the books that they want to, you know, work at the at the fair. That they've got things they want to do. They've got, you know, that's a very, very pe- busy period for them. So if you submit to an agent a few days before the Frankfurt book fair, you might get lost. You have to think about things like this. After the Frankfurt book fair, they come home and then it's pretty much Christmas. So, you know, you've you've got to think like this. It's not as if you if you submit in December, your book's not going to get seen. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you have to think about what's going on in the world of publishing. And it would behove you very well to educate yourself about that. There's lots of ways to do it. I think, you know, there's the bookseller um newsletter there's 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 loads of ways to do it i don't mean to really bone up but just to have a sense there must be literary calendars online there must be loads of them so be aware of the seasonality yes Mm. and be aware of what what and you know when i was trying to talk to a couple of these agents two or three of them i was trying to talk to who i know who are friends of mine just said so i'm sorry it's home i've got so many meetings today and i'm doing this and i'm doing that and you know we're getting ready for the london book fair and this is happening you know they are busy busy people and now i understand that some people here are going to be saying but part of their job is to read our submissions they want new good books yes that's absolutely true that is what they want and they do their utmost to do that to fit it in yeah. you know, the world of publishing and the world of agents has changed a lot uh, in the last few years and um they want desperately to get good good new work they really do yeah. and they will do everything they can to read things in time but the first thing to remember is that when you press send on your email it's not as if it's going to sort of ping gently into that agent's inbox and they'll go oh a submission i think i'll read it now it's, it's just not going to happen, however good it is. And we're going to talk about sort of do's and don'ts and stuff as well. Mm. Um, but, but mainly what I said, it's not to do with you. If you're not getting a reply, the last thing is, it, it, is it's going to be about is you or your book, probably. Until yeah. you get an email saying, I'm sorry, it's not for us. Then it's to do with you and your book. Up until that point, it's not personal they haven't forgotten it will get seen you just have to hang tight and it's it's a hard thing to do but the advice and you know what I can't remember now if she said to mention her name or not so I better not but this person who I said no who knows everything about publishing who really does gave some really great advice and I'm going to I'm going to open my word document now Mm. and tell you what she said she said start something else start start your new project or even not a book but start something else take take a break um do things like work on your package your your sample your cover letter synopsis all that kind of stuff but once it's done just take a break and relax don't go keep going back to it your book and picking at it that's not going to do you any good and do talk to other to other writers because you'll find that they're not getting um they're not getting sort of instant replies as well and you know what I do get sometimes from from authors is and she said a lot more that maybe we can use today as well but but one of the things I do get a lot from authors is my friend in my book group just got an agent and you know they want desperately to be pleased with them but they also think it's not fair it's not right 
it's got nothing to do with you and it's got nothing to do with them. It's just the way the dice have fallen, honestly. I mean, don't misunderstand me. Of course, it's to do with them. They've written a bloody good book and they've got an agent. Naturally, it's to do with them. But the fact that you have not yet got an yeah. agent is not. It, it's just it's just madness and, and, and despair lies down that route. So it's very hard to say don't do it, I know, or very easy for me to say don't do it. But yeah. it is it is um, it, it's 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 a fruitless comparison. It's a false comparison. X yeah. has got an agent and I haven't. Is is yeah. a really my book's better than theirs. You don't know what. The, obviously, the agent thought that their book was good for whatever okay. reason. So you know, if your book might be better than theirs. It's absolutely true. But it's it's a sort of fruitless. It's just adding more pain. Yeah, yeah. already yeah. painful situation. Okay, so the message: give yourself a break. Don't worry, it's not personal. Uh, okay, so where do we go from here, Sal? Because well, let me have a look. Let me have a look at what some agents said to me, shall we? This okay. is again, this is not how I usually do it. So uh, I'm I just have... gonna, Sal, so while you're doing yeah. that, because I've had a question about this, about talking mm-hmm. about the process. When tonight we're not focusing on the process of how to get an agent. No, we're talking about what happens when you've submitted to an agent and yeah. when just so that you know what's going on kind of behind those closed doors, if you like, mm. more about that. Because it is like, it is like they, your book just disappears into a black hole. Yeah. It, uh, and it's agonising. It's, it's so terrible. Yeah. But I did ask, I did talk to some agents and ask them sort of very basic questions, not about how to get an agent, what to do with your book. Because as I say, there's so many resources out there so many resources so i asked a question for example any do's and don'ts so one agent who didn't particularly want to be named for whatever reason said do your research make sure the agent works in the genre you write in and and then she sort of goes on to to say don't do a huge um scattergun no sorry this is my fault i'll start again do your research Make sure the agent works in the genre you write in. This isn't advice to how to get an agent. This means if they deal, this, I talked to you, Tom, didn't I, about plumbing and um, plumbing and electricians. Yeah. If if you have found an agent and online and they specialize in historical fiction, historical romance, and you send them a sci-fi cyber murder, they're just going to get, it could be the best sci-fi murder ever, but they're not going to, it, it's just going to irritate them. Look at my website. This is not what I do. So that's a sort of do and don't. Um, she said, this particular agent said, don't do a huge scattergun submission. Stick to a few, a few, five to 10 initially. And I think that's a sort of good, good guide. Uh, a lot of people just think, I'm just going to send it out to everybody. But then that just, you know, it's agony. You're just multiplying your agony. So, and obviously choose the ones you want first. You'll have your yes. agents that you've had your eyes on. So choose but, them first. But, but Sal, just to be clear on that, mm. again, because there's a question around this, we're not, you should be going to multiple agents. You should have a short list of those that you want to um, reach out to and go to. Don't, you shouldn't be focusing one at a time necessarily. No, don't do one at a time, but, but, but do do a manageable amount manageable for yeah. your expectations and manageable just in terms of knowing everyone knowing what's going on sort of expectations um uh claire patterson conrad at janko and nesbitt the excellent agent said keep patient we read everything but it may take a while since we get hundreds of submissions a day yeah and the one thing that they both said was that the only thing they really want to know from you after you've submitted is if you've got another agent who says, we want to, we want this book. So if they, if, if you've got another agent who's, who's keen, have the courtesy to get back to the other agents who, who are possibly reading your book and say, look, this is just to let you know, nothing long, just a nice short email, just to let you know that so-and-so is interested and if you are also interested, you know. So, and so, so that also makes a point that you shouldn't be following up, you know. No, and this is, this is the thing that they were all very clear on. Once you've sent your book, 
leave it. And the temptation I know is so, so strong to send. And, you know, after, um, after that three or four months, you know, a very simple, plain, hi, you know, just checking in to see if, if, if you got my manuscript is fine. Do not ever call the office. People do. And don't do sort of flashy gimmicky things. Um, that's that's not helpful. Um, um, I'm just trying to see what. Um, I'm sorry about this because I don't usually do this, as you know. No, well, uh, so, Sal, I'm while you're read through, I'll read. I'll read through them later. In what while, while you're looking, Sal, I'm um, David. Mm. David's come up with a, a really useful point in chat. Actually, he mm. said. Use the query tracker site because it has every agent by agency and importantly, their submission guidelines. Well, this is this is what all the agents I spoke to said when I talked about expectations for turnaround, when I talked about this, when I talked about that, they said it's all on our website. It's all on our website. If we say on our website, we're not going to look at it for six weeks. We're not going to look at it for six weeks. If right. it is on our website, it's going to be three or four. And you see, all agencies are different. But if if they say, and, and this is another thing that I think agents find frustrating, that they do lay it all out very clearly. Their submission guides are crystal clear on their website. And so, um, so it, it's frustrating if somebody then gets in touch you know, a week later and says, what's happening? What's going on? It's you're not going to endear yourself if yeah. you didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. I, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to this. It, it, I think it'll work. So we've talked about obvious do's and don'ts. Um, the reason that, that Claire said, please let us know if another agent is interested is because they might be, what happens when an agent gets a book, and this is another thing that, that people tend not to know, as a general rule, an agent will get a book. If they're interested, if the first page and first chapter catches their imagination, but um, then they will um, start thinking. They'll start thinking, hmm, is this for me? Could I do this? Where could I place this? What could, what could I do with this? Maybe it's not for me, but maybe somebody else in this agency it would be right for. Maybe I'll take it to the weekly meeting and talk about it there and see what people think. So it's, you know, this process begins. So if you've got interest from another agent, you go back to the agents who've got your book and say, just as a courtesy to let you know that, you know, Ada Smith and Brown are interested. And, um, that's because they might be in the process of, of thinking, well, I think we'll make an offer for this. So it's it's just it's it's just polite to, to, to let them know what's happening. And also you could get two agencies. I was gonna say, there's, there's also an element yeah. if you are going to make an offer, make it yeah. quickly. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, yeah. That, it kind of cuts both ways. Interesting. And but you, you should because this is a question that's come up as well, I think, as well, from Gabrielle. You should name that other agent in the letter when you're making that reference. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I asked about realistic time expectations. Once once an author's press send, when should they expect to hear back? And again, they everyone I spoke to said, we say that on our website. Somebody I talked to, to several people I talked to said two or three months is realistic. Somebody else, Claire, uh, said uh, about six weeks. And she was one of the very few people who said, if you haven't heard from us by then, you're probably not going to. And I think they say that on their website. Most agencies, not most, but a, a lot, maybe most agencies will get give you some kind of reply, even if it's only just a sorry, not for us. Yeah. Um, but yes, there is a point. If you look at their website, there is a point. And I think if you do think if they're getting hundreds and hundreds a day, there is a point where sometimes, and it's 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 so wretched from the point of view of the author, but there is a cutoff point. And then, hey, if you do suddenly hear from them, nice, nice, you know, nice surprise. So what I would do is look carefully at their website, see what they say and put the mark on your calendar. Right. I'm not going to hear from Smith and Jones 
cross them out, cross them off my list. Then if you do, hooray, you do. But it manages your expectations. Yeah. Um, I mean, Claire said they aim to read submissions within a month if they can. Um, and, and in terms of your expectations of what you could receive back, Sal, mm. we're talking about, a, a, you know. So there, a, are, there are a plethora of possibilities of what yeah. you can hear back from. And this is something else that I'm constantly trying to help authors manage their response to these replies. You can get what used to be just a, a literal slip in the post, you know, thank you for sending out your manuscript, it's not for us. So you can get the, the, the email version of that, very brief, thank you, not for our list. There's a lot of reasons you can get that, but don't dwell on it. They do, it's, basically, it's not for that. It's not for them, it's not for their list. And trying to work out why or for what reason you got that reply is, is fruitless because you will find that you've sent it to another agent who's given you a, a much more detailed reply so if you know if you've got a sort of basically a form email just move on they didn't want it was yeah. that quality? you know finding an agent is like finding a, a therapist or a doctor or a, or a lover you know it's it's really got to for both sides it's really got to they've got to feel that spark they've got yeah. to feel that spark yeah. and if they've got hundreds a day some of them are going to be just form letters you know swipe left it's not it's not all right whichever one it is um, I've been off the market. Yeah, for years. I don't know what you're talking uh, about. <laughs> um, but um, it, it's not meant to be cruel. It's not meant to hurt you. It's just simply move on from us with this. Now, what what I have just as much trouble with is explaining to authors that if you get a positive but still a no response from an agent, they mean it. If they say look, you're, you're a great writer. I really enjoyed reading this book. It's just not for me. I'm sure you're going to find representation, but, you know, congratulations, just not for me. They mean it. Take joy in that. Take pleasure yeah. in that. A very good agent has enjoyed your work. Go out and have a drink, celebrate, have a little party. All too often, th these encouraging replies and they are meant to be encouraging are taken as a it's just a rejection it's just a no it's not a busy agent has taken time out of their busy day to read your book and sit down and tell you that they liked it and sat, sat down to tell you that they, they think your writing is good that is fantastic take great heart from that don't think oh it's just a rejection it is a rejection but it's a it's a very exciting and kind rejection and they won't why would they say it if they didn't mean it there's no yeah. and I've asked them all about this and they all said no 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 why would I do that if I if I if I give a nice response then you've got the ones that are sort of halfway in between and you don't know quite what to make of that um but the, the take-home message is if you get a no there are other agents out there it's not worth trying to analyze why and it's certainly not worth getting back in touch and saying, please, could you tell me why? It'd be wonderful if people could give you, if they could give everyone that response. But it's what I tried to do at the beginning of this conversation was illustrate the volume of, yeah. of submissions that they get. So um, don't, don't worry if you get a very brief email and do celebrate if you get one that, I mean, really celebrate. If yeah. you've got a good agent that's told you your writing's good, really celebrate. Uh, we need to dive into some questions because time is, is okay. moving quickly on. Are we and okay to do that? Or have you got? Let, let me just make sure I've picked everything up from sure. the agents. Long waits, very complicated answer. Can mean no, can mean the book fair's coming up. It depends on the time of year. It can depend on everything. So look at their, look at their website decide yourself a cutoff point and then move on from it um they won't say yes this is what we just talked about they won't say they like it if they don't mean it um what is the most common misconception i asked and and they all said it's they don't realize how busy we are people do not realize how busy we are and and claire 
said, I have to prioritise my existing clients' work. So there is little time left to read new work. I therefore have to be ruthless and decisive, even though my decision is entirely subjective. And, and of course, another agent might love it. But, you know, it, it, it's, it, they're dealing with a lot. And one of the things I asked is what, what can authors do that will scupper their own chances? And mm -hmm. everyone said, don't be pushy. Just don't be pushy. Just be patient, please. Um, please don't call the office. Please don't write us long letters. And that's the other thing they said that if you, if you, and I'm always telling my authors is get everything right. No typos, no mistakes, no sloppiness at all, because they'll just think, well, you know, they can't even be bothered to, you know, I'm just put my kids to bed. I'm sitting up reading this manuscript and they can't even be bothered to, you know, spell check it. So be very, very, very careful. Please don't send books through the mail or attach book jackets. Focus on one project at a time. Just be a clear and brief submission letter, a short synopsis of the book and however many chapters we asked for. OK, so that's important. So I'm going to interrupt you there because mm. we've had a quite a few questions about that. Are we talking about query letter synopsis for the manuscript? But again, it's following the guidelines of those. Just do, yeah. just do exactly what they ask and nothing else. Yeah. Nothing else. No gimmicks, no clever things. You know, when we were talking, Tom, I said to you, it's it's a uh, it's if, it, we, if, if we were working and somebody brought a brass band in to the office to try and get our attention, we wouldn't be, you know, we wouldn't be happy. Um, one of the agents I spoke to said, not Claire, said, um, she once had a death threat because she hadn't looked at something <laughs> within a week. Um, you know, so people people get very wound up. I, I also compare it, I'm, I'm sure wrongly, but in, in my world, I compare it to kind of when we're advertising roles and jobs and you set out very clearly what you want people to apply mm. with. Yeah. When they don't, it's a, almost a reason for you to reject them without even yeah. looking any further because it, it makes your list more manageable. It's It's harsh, but... Actually, if people can't follow your guidelines, then you, it's, it's so, so important. But it's yeah. important as well for managing your expectations, because then you will know what. And, you know, when I look, oh. it's true. They do all say. So let's expect to hear back from us. I'm going to dive in. So a, a really interesting question has just come in where um, sorry, I'm not sure who it's from. If an agent says good things about your manuscript, but suggests you work with a line editor as part of your rejection, as part of a rejection, is it reasonable to query again after those extensive revisions? They will probably say, mm. I think if they say that it's reasonable to shoot them a really simple, first of all, a very, you know, thank you so much for your reply. I really appreciate you getting back to me. Would you be willing to look at revised manuscript? That's that's reasonable. If they've made a suggestion, that is a reasonable question to ask. Yeah. Um, if they've told you you need a line editor, then you need a line editor. So yeah. so get it. Really, just do it before you. You know, I I'm bound to say this, aren't I? But just get your books edited before you submit. Really, yeah. the agony doesn't have to be me. There's a hundred thousand great editors out there there's agencies like the literary consultancy there if you want to just get it sort of sub edited at least at least do that please 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 or you're just shooting yourself in the foot yeah just, okay. just do that excellent advice um okay another question is there a way to determine if after getting many rejection letters you need to revise your book or is it a simple numbers game and you should keep submitting the same manuscript both mm. so what you're looking for if they give you detailed um feedback and by detailed i mean a couple of lines or a paragraph or two is commonality if they're all saying you know i did enjoy this but the pacing wasn't quite right if they're all saying i did enjoy this but i couldn't really get a handle on on your protagonist then then or, or not all but you know the majority of them saying then you need to work on that if there's commonality what's frustrating is when you submit to an agent is you often get very different very different you know someone will say i love the beginning somebody else will say i hated the beginning you know that's that's very frustrating but they're just readers like yeah. everyone that you know they are just re you know, they're just readers with their own tastes and opinions um now so they have they've got their own taste and actually this is a question 
sorry, I, I feel like I've cut you off, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> um, if you've been rejected by one agent, this is a question from one of the listeners tonight. What's the rule of thumb for querying other agencies, uh, sorry, other agents within the same agency? That is quite a good question. I think the thing is, if an agent, it depends on the size of the agency. If there's four or five or six agents, they will have thought, I don't want this, but will George want it? Will Gary yeah. want it? Will Annette want it? No, probably not. If it's a huge agency, if you're sending it to, I don't know, Peter Fred and Dunlop or somebody, you know, with, with, with huge amount of agents there, it's still a bit uh, to, to submit to agents in, in the same agency, but in a way, you've got nothing to lose. Uh, but be honest, say, I submitted to so-and-so, they said, blah, um, I was, and, but what you must do is say why you're resubmitting to them. Yes. So you must say, you know, I've been looking at your page. I've been yeah. looking at the people you represent. I hope that perhaps you might be interested. If not, you know, please forgive me. You, you have to be a bit, obviously nobody wants to be like Uriah Heap, you know, sort of creeping, but you've got to be respectful of their yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, they don't no agent like anyone else in any other job wouldn't like doesn't like sort of bombast and cockiness and you know overconfidence it's it's because partly they think well what's this person going to be like to work with yeah there's some great um comments in chat going on right now thank you francis thank you tanya for your um points of view really interesting and i'm going to reiterate because like we, we lots of questions coming in still asking about these things it's really important that you check the submission um requirements on the agent's website it's, it's, it's uh, it will it's all be there um so that that should be your source of information for, you know for, for everybody there is a second source of information but it's it's i suppose for trying to find agents and that's a writers and artists yearbook right uh, yeah. which comes out every year uh, you can either get it online or, or get an actual hard copy from your library and that's got every single agent in it and what they want and what they're looking for and uh, the kind of books they cover. So that's a good way of narrowing down the agents you want. It's a, the Writer's Night is here book. It's, it's, it's really a, a valuable resource. It certainly used to be. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Okay. We've, we're, we're, uh, time has flown once again. We're into our last few minutes. Um, so I'm trying to pick a couple of questions out. Uh, I've got one. Uh, this is an interesting one. So Madeline sub submitted this really early on. Thank you, Madeline. Um, can you submit after you've self-published? I skipped the submission step, but what may want to try it once I've edited books two and three? So I think we're talking about different books, but you've self-published initially. First of all, you've got to be honest about that when you submit this is a real moving target and different it, it depends a lot on genres it depends a lot you know publishers and agents keep keep an eye on the amazon algorithms not a not a bdi but you know if there's a book a self-published book that they notice is doing really really well they they they're going to get interested but what they don't want uh you see i'm not even going to talk for them with this. yeah okay it, it it changes all the time yeah if you're thinking of submitting and you've already self-published just be very frank about that don't go into big detail this is what they all said we don't want to read long letters please don't write us long letters we're so busy please don't write us long letters just tell us the facts you know dear agent please find attached three chapters from blah they don't want the whole book um we I, I have self-published this on Amazon. It has sold X number of copies. But I now feel it might be ready for publication or something, but yeah. just keep it calm, calm and just the facts. Okay, excellent. I was sorry, while you were saying that, Sal, I was busy trying to find a link to the writers and artists, the writers and artists <laughs> yearbook. Just have a no, search think... online. It's there. You can get it from Amazon. I'm sure yeah, there's yeah. Be a digital version as well um it, it's it's uh, very well known okay uh right um yeah we're really into the last couple of questions now um and 
sorry i'm in no hurry <laughs> well we could we we could carry on into next month um, <laughs> well we could we so could. well we can certainly carry on if, if uh, once again if people do have questions after these sessions do contact us do drop me a note do drop us a note you can do that via hello at prowritingaid.com i'm on tom.wild w-i-l-d-e at price prowritingaid.com or you can contact us via twitter um but last couple of questions so um do agents publishers keep a no-fly list of problematic submitters i think that probably varies agency to agency i'm pretty sure the death threat guy probably went on yeah <laughs> yeah um, i don't I think that does. I, I mean, that's a very personal thing. I think, you know, basically my answer to that question is don't worry about it because you're not going to be a problematic submitter, are you? So you don't have to worry about that. That's um, a very good answer. Just, just, you know, just follow what it says on the website. You'll be fine. Yeah. Be and nice. again, some people are asking about, you know, do you submit three chapters or, or do you go for the word count? You because... do exactly what it says on their website. Now, if usually... The first three chapters that's what people usually want yeah. um claire they want two chapters uh, they want a, a letter and a synopsis and 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 two chapters but they are very very clear they're always clear listen on my website i'm very clear about my submission requirements one book in 20 doesn't do it and i'm immediately annoyed i just asked you to use this font and this layout and this please just why haven't you done what because you immediately feel like you're you're not paying attention it's it's frustrating but in this case I mean I'm always fine I'm a very easygoing person but in this case you've got to do what they want that they, they are just not really half more than half the time they're just oh let's do, I'll stick my neck out they're not going to look at it if you don't do what they ask you to do they're not going to look at it they'll yeah. just delete it okay okay so a fantastic insight there can um, i can i ask one last thing please i'm sorry is there anything else about this one last thing that you feel i haven't covered that you would like to know because i think this is a very important session so certainly from the questions we've had many of them have been along the same themes there are lots of people i must admit that are in, interested in knowing about the process of submitting to agents and you know yeah. what goes on so maybe that's something we, and i'm really sorry we were clear but we, we we just there's so much out there about that and it's a whole topic in itself so um you know that is something we could cover at a later date definitely i'm, um, I'm not the person to talk about submitting to agents yeah. Uh, yeah. you know this is not i don't i know a lot of agents but and i will happily say to people mm, this agent might like it but yeah. i never get involved with that yeah. and um that there is a ton of excellent resources probably on pro writing aid about about submitting to to agents about the, the how to get your book picked up bit of it yeah this is not what i wanted to talk about today i wanted to talk about trying to help the pain of of what happens after you press send that's what i wanted to talk about yeah um and I think you've done that. So I think we've done that. that, well, that I, I hope. That. I really hope so. I'm. I. I. I know it's unusual that I sort of started to read out from a page, but I did want to make sure I covered what they had said. And thanks so much to everyone that talked to me and the great advice that, that they confirmed. You know, it was it was really good. I'm loving your comments, everybody. Thank you so much. There's so much love, uh, Sal and Francis. Yes, your number one takeaway going up over your computer is a sign that says it isn't about you and your book you're absolutely right yeah um yeah please keep that in mind everybody um i i hope you've got as much out of tonight's session that i i have uh and we look forward to bringing you our our final session of the monthly version in april uh stay safe until then um and yeah and we will speak to you soon and don't forget uh, let us know if you've got suggestions for that session. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Sally will come up with something delightful. I'll think, I'll think of something spectacular yeah, exactly. if, if we can't think of anything else. All right, Thanks everybody. Thanks so much, everybody. It's been great. See you next month. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.